Welcome to the 10th edition of our festival Home Delivery Inside Festival program. We are streaming again from the Ars Electronica Center, so please feel free also to comment uh, in the comment section below. Um, we are streaming on YouTube and uh, Facebook as always. And today I'm here with my fantastic colleague Andrew Newman, who is working with me together mostly on European projects. Our this year's Ars Electronica Festival thrives for a new digital deal. And whatever we are going to develop and discuss with this new digital deal will always be strongly connected, of course, also to the way we manage, we control and also monitor in a way our data. And this will be exactly our today's topic session. You probably have heard already the argument of Ars Electronica quite many times that of course the success of many digital products and also services do really depend also on the trust of all of us, of the citizens, in the data, also in the handling of the services uh, and the credibility of the providers. It will not so much yeah, be a big role if the product or, or the screen is a bit brighter or the process is a bit faster, but really how we trust um, these products, how we trust also the suppliers uh, to proceed with our data. Digital data is likely to become also something like a new oil, a raw material of the future. And the refinement and the handling of this new raw material will soon be the big, big uh, role. That's why we really also focus a lot, of course, on uh, responsible use of this data. And mar many artists are doing exactly this. And of course, it's not only about the digital traces um, and also the privacy issues connected to this, which need to be addressed, uh, but also the environmental traces of data. Global energy consumption of data centers is a really huge issue for the global environment. Data set centers are emitting as much CO2 as the aviation industry, for example. And these numbers are, as we all know, really exponentially growing. The project Data Garden received actually a honorary mention of the Starts Prize in 2021. So they're prize winning work and it is an organism based data center. This functional carbon negative data infrastructure is also capable of storing and retrieving data from the DNA of plants using organisms that create its own energy. Through this project, the Grow Your Own Cloud team, they are composed of Cyrus Clark and Monica Seifert, and they collaborated actually with Jeff Nivala. They aimed really to build an organic cloud that emits oxygen rather than CO2. But actually, let's in look into the video and um, let us explain them or give them a try to explain them how the project works. Our appetite for data is insatiable. In a digital world, watching videos, taking photos, or asking for directions means more data flowing into an invisible cloud. Yet this cloud is far less fluffy than we think. Cloud infrastructure is growing, occupying swathes of land and consuming huge amounts of electricity. Today, global data centers use as much energy as the entire UK. By 2030, this figure will rise to more than 20% of global energy. This has serious implications for the environment, with the data industry already emitting as much CO2 as aviation and set to grow exponentially. It seems we're heading towards a future of data warming. But imagine if the cloud could absorb CO2. What if servers could produce their own energy? What if data could be grown and cared for by communities? Grow Your Own Cloud stores data nature's way, in the DNA of organisms. We seek to create a new type of cloud, one that is organic rather than silicon and which emits oxygen rather than CO2. This involves working with DNA data science. This technology has the potential to store all of the world's data in just one kilogram of DNA. It works with organisms that create their own energy. It stores data in a format that never grows obsolete.
The data garden is a new type of infrastructure for DNA data storage that promotes harmony between people, ecosystems and technology. The installation features plants encoded with data. The encoding process involves converting digital data such as text, JPEG and MP3s into a biological format using genetic modification to convert from binary to ACGT. In the data garden, data stored within the plant's DNA can be decoded using the latest genetic sequencing technologies. This process is triggered by introducing a liquid sample to a nanopore sequencer, which analyzes the genetic information to reveal hidden messages, sounds, and images to be experienced in the space. Working with nature to alleviate the threat of data warming, the Data Garden invites visitors to explore a world in which data storage is truly green through self-sufficient data ecosystems. This type of data center makes data an accessible public resource, open and shareable within communities. We begin Exploring similar themes of how to store data in alternative methods to also look at ways we can treat and uh, find better ways to uh, store data that's not so uh, ecologically damaging and looking at sort of uh, methods of storing data that don't use as much energy. We're across to uh, work from Garden Gdansk hosted by the Latsnia Center for Contemporary Art. And the work is the Blue Humanities Archive uh, done by Justina Gorowska. It's work that looks at sp uh, storing a data uh, archive of the oceans in DNA. Uh, let's have a look at that video now. Hi, my name is Justyna Gorowska and I am Intermedia Artist from Krakow. Since 2020, together with Evelina Jarosz, we've been working on the concept of uh, the Blue Humanities Archive. Uh, we collect and uh, make a creative use of digital data such as uh, 3D scans, photos, videos, VR, AR, or all the data are related to deep care of uh, aquatic ecosystems. Working on our archive, we began to look for a sustainable way of storing uh, digital data uh, that will provide an alternative to energy consuming networking of database. And this is how we came up with the idea of DNA digital data, data storage uh, that can fit a, a million of terabytes in just a few uh, grams uh, suspense in water, thereby minimalizing ecological costs of uh, databases. Virtual reality I'm working on, which samples you can see in the background, is an example of the Blue Humanities Archive. Uh, in this work I try to reveal um, the translation of the layers of our fragmented life, uh, where a binary code, a zero one code, can be encrypted to DNA. Uh, obviously, uh, DNA is composed of a nuclear bases. A, T, C, and G. From Gdansk, we actually travel now to Moscow and the HSE Garden uh, Pavilion. This garden is a platform that actually presents this year an art exhibition, also a theater, a sound performance, and an animated short film program. It was created both by the students as well as curators of the HSE Art and Design School, which is part of the HSE University, one of the leading Russian universities. And one of the projects is addressing the topic of, of data ownership, also privacy and transparency in particular connected to social media platforms. The project is called Transprivacy and it's a speculative browser game exploring really the ambiguous na nature of social uh, networks transparency. It also questions in a way one's ownerships um, over their digital copy and cases or builds the cases on different information leaks um, and tries also to displace the different um, social media platforms as states on a, on a map. So you can navigate also through this map um, 
some kind of a digital territory. And of course the um, goal and the objective of, of this uh, game is also to make all social networks transparent um, and lead us also in a direction to understand and receive a knowledge, build knowledge of types of uh, personal data breaches. A really fantastic project highlighting also the yeah, governance problems we have with data. Let's look into it. Hello, my name is Kate Umnova. I'm a multimedia curator. I teach multimedia art and design at HSC University, Moscow. I am excited that one of our students' projects, Transprivacy by Alexa Zotova, was selected for the Art Electronica Festival, The New Digital Deal. I do believe that our current understanding of the world is grounded in digital perception. As creatives, we seek new approaches to human-machine interaction that shapes hybrid narratives and experiences. My name is Alexa Zotova and I'm glad to present to you my project. Transprivacy is a speculative browser game exploring the ambiguous nature of social networks transparency. It also questions a person's ownership of their digital copy. The project is based on the data from Have I Been Pound said the cases of different information leaks are stored. The website communicates social networks as separate digital states. Each digital territory is attached to a certain social network embodied in the form of watermark pattern. The user's goal is to make all social networks transparent by converging accounts into the breached ones. An acting user should consider that every social network contains their account as well. The game process leads players to the knowledge of types of their personal data breaches. To convert the map of the cell into the breached ones, users should make one left mouse click. And to get the info about breached accounts, users should just hover on it. And to discover all digital states, uh, the player should just scroll the page horizontally and vertically. So I think one of the first times we started counting how many gigabytes of data we had is when we started getting MP3s. I was working at an Apple store at the time when the first iPod came out and we were counting 1,000 songs in your pocket. I used to get customers complaining that they only had 998 songs. We're going to look at a project now from Create Your World, our youth part of the festival, and a, and a, prize, uh, from, a prize winning work from Nicholas Yuk. Uh, it's a talking Tesla coil that can also play music. So one of the things of uh, when we look at computing and the processing of data, we can also look at analog computing. Analog computing doesn't actually store data, it just goes through the data live. Uh, this is a way of uh, computing that can be competing with supercomputing uh, on specific targets. And it also uses less resources. The Talking Tesla Coil by uh, Nicola, Nicholas Yuk is uh, an analog element. So just as we had the MP3s and moved on to playing records because there was too many songs, maybe we will soon be listening to Tesla Coils. Um, let's go over to that project now.
Let's move now from this really fantastic project to another fantastic garden in our group of so many collaborators this year. Um, the garden Vilnius from the Institutio Media Interdisciplinary Artists Association will actually present three different workshops. Each of the workshops will bring out one experimental film um, and they will all form together then a whole story. One of those three workshops will be the Sour Door DNA workshop. It speculates on the implications between living and also non-living matter and is designed a little bit like a yeah, science fiction story. Artist Cam actually uses Sour Door in her daily also artistic practice and in this case as a kind of storage medium. Through the workshop she also wants to question food consumption and origins and in the workshops, uh, participants will follow the stories of new baby sour doors, influenced also by us humans. Activities will then, of course, question if objects have memory and if the memory is always related to the brain. Let's look into the workshop. Hello and welcome. My name is Kamila Krasovskaita and I'm going to be part of Vilnius Garden in Ars Electronica 2021. <laughs> My workshop is about sourdough DNA. As an artist, I'm working with sourdough as my artistic media. And in this workshop, uh, we are going to use sourdough as data. By touching uh, different surfaces, we're going to create uh, stories and also try to make bread out of it, try to look for like differences and so on. <laughs> So if any of you wants to join, you are really welcome to be part of the workshop too. So just register yourself and see you soon. With this fictional excursion in the world, into the world of sour doors, we actually have reached already um, yeah, the end of today's session. 15 days are left, so 15 more days for you also to explore the whole festival program. Check out the possible workshops like this one where you can register or simply attend. Also the whole scope, of course, of conferences, exhibitions, journeys, programs we are currently preparing behind the seats for you. We are getting ready, I can promise this. Uh, we are working on full speed behind the scenes and we are very much looking forward to welcome you again next week to our next Inside Festival edition. Thanks, stay tuned and goodbye. Thank you.